Hello, everyone. Ah, nice to see you all this warm evening. Um, so I'm a councillor for South Oxfordshire District Council, as you might know. And uh, the ward I do represent is Sanford, Cullen, but it's also um, one, two, three, four other villages. So there's sort of six in all. Um, and that is part of what I'll be talking about, about going to see parishes. But I thought I might just talk about how I became a councillor briefly first, which is because I used to get emails from David, I think, actually, saying, would anybody like to stand as a paper candidate, which I did a few times, I think, I think twice, I stayed, I, I stood as a paper candidate, and, uh, you know, didn't really get anywhere at all. Um, and then this last May 2019, the, the elections for the district council, then um, I stood, and it was much more because we've been campaigning so much about the excessive housing numbers in South Oxfordshire in the Conservatives local plan. Um, and of course that gave me a higher profile, but it also gave me a focus and people, other people's a focus. So, so I was much more likely, I knew I was much more likely to win. And actually we campaigned quite hard, me and a bunch of, of friends who were campaigning, but also other Green Party people. Robin was very good at organizing organizing my campaign um, and in the end because the, we had that Lib Dem Green agreement not to stand against each other uh, it was just me and a Conservative the Labour didn't even put up a candidate the Labour Party um, and I had this massive landslide victory which was quite amazing actually quite quite surprising in lots of ways because it's been Conservative so long so it was something like 70 something percent of the vote something like that um, so it was on the back of that, it was the whole on the back of that campaign, on the back of a very unhappy bunch of people. And, well, you know, I think also because the Conservatives have been in power for a lot of, a lot of the time, people were fed up, but, um, and possibly a bit of the Brexit issue there as well was coming through. Um, and it did mean, as you know, that we're now in power. So I thought, we, you know, we'd, I'd sort of focus a little bit on what it's like to be a councillor in, in power, I mean, I haven't been a councillor when in the opposition, so, you know, I can't compare. Um, but being in power does mean, and we're in power with the, the, the Lib Dems, so there's, there's two things you have to do, which is, you know, change council policy and strategies, but also work with this Lib Dem group. And we're a minority, you know, we are a minority, the six of us, but most of us are, most of the partnership are, um, I can't remember how many Lib Dems are there? I, don't, I can't remember, nine, something like that. Um, we actually have a far you know, disproportionate number of posts in the council in relation to how many of us there are. I mean, I'm a um, cycle champion. Um, I'm the chair of the Climate and Ecological Advisory Committee. Um, I'm on scrutiny. Um, I'm a sub for the planning committee. Um, and um, I'm also on a, on a minor thing, really, which is on the schools organisation and strategy group as well. So the rep from South Oxfordshire on that. So quite a lot of things and 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 Jo will talk a bit about what she does as well but you know I think in general we we punch above our weight I think is the term um but being 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 first a councillor and then immediately going into the administration um was both uh, daunting but it was quite exciting at the same time so it's daunting in the sense that we had to find out how it all works and I mean I'm quite lucky in some ways I've worked for a local authority for a while so I knew the sort of process and procedures behind the scenes and how all that worked um, but only from a sort of you know an underling who does the work not actually somebody who who makes the makes the decisions and makes all that and um, I think because we had the local plan issue and it was such a high and important um, thing that we had to sort out and people's expectations were extremely high about what we we could do <clears throat> dealing with that became the sort of the, the year of the, the first year's work it was what most of us I think concentrated on for the first year um, it did mean that things like setting out the corporate plan and the whole strategy and changing the focus of the council because remember these council officers have been working under a, a conservative administration for I don't know how long it is, but it's an awful long time. It's probably 16 years or something, I think they said. Um, so it's it means that you have to get the officers on your side, make them think differently. I think I think we were you know, pushing on an open door very much. And people were very, very happy to do things differently. I think there was um, 
a sense of complacency before from if I'm honest from the last lot um, and so focusing our efforts on making a new strategy a new corporate plan we didn't do that as quickly as we should have done but that was because of the local development plan and all the housing we had to sort out um, and that seems to have been and it is it is the key of what councils do but it seems to have had quite a galvanizing effect on all the officers and um you know the other the other councillors too we have a focus we have a performance plan again measured against that and, and we have you know really clear um objectives and outcomes so it's it's been it's been good and quite exciting to see that come into place um my own work as a as a ward councillor there's quite, there's quite a bit of work i won't go on about this too much sort of case work so people actually write to you and ask you for very specific help from anything from you know um yellow lines being painted on the road which is nothing to do with us anyway so a lot of that is just pushing those people in the right direction um but also planning applications are a big thing you know people get concerned about planning applications they'd like you to speak for them um which you know you can do as a ward councillor um, and that's um i find that really really satisfying thing to do it's really nice to be able to help people specifically and sometimes what they ask for is really simple you know they they just don't know how this, the organization works you point them in the right direction and they're really grateful because it's it's you know saves them so much time and you're able to help them um there are a few planning applications i've dealt with which have gone against what they wanted and it, that's really quite sad as an old couple in sanford who you know they're really quite upset about what's happened and it's it does that is quite difficult to deal with because there's nothing you know there's nothing i can do the planning committee and this is before us actually um had agreed something and and the complaint didn't work and now he's got eight flats next door to him and he's you know not you you know he's he's worried about all the the lorries and the construction so so things like that can be hard sometimes but it is generally i'd say quite satisfying to help people quite enjoyable um, and you know you end up making quite a few friends which has been really nice actually i'm very i now go around the villages and go to the parish meetings and you know you do i do feel that you know i'm very i'm, I'm welcome and in in the main they're they're very positive in the main they're um you know quite friendly and helpful so i i, I think it's a two-way thing um and as a cycle champion um it's just a role where you just promote cycling really cycling and walking um it went a bit quiet over lockdown in some ways though we did do a bit of work about the uh the new grants that was coming from uh the government and we tried to do some sort of pressure to get some more cycling in south Oxfordshire rather than just around the city um it didn't really work but um we now now we're going out of lockdown i think and we have a new administration at the county council you know we really i really expect that to to ramp up and be able to influence where, how, when those sort of infrastructure happens. Um, I've been talking to um, downtown, Jane Alexander um, about the velodrome, possible velodrome in Oxford City, how we can work on that. I've talked to British Cycling, I've very, got a very, very keen person from British Cycling interested in helping us in South Oxfordshire and possibly looking at the velodrome. Um, so it's really nice that you can ring up these people and say you're a councillor and they pay attention to you and they start things moving. So, you know, just talking to this guy in British Cycling just started things moving really, really quickly. So that that's, you know, that's really great. You can actually push things. Um, nothing happens quickly, as you know, in local government or anything really. But it's really, really great to have that um, ability to talk to people and get things, get things started. Um, I'm also on the scrutiny committee um, and uh, like I said, a sub for the planning committee. So you can sometimes, sometimes the evenings can be quite full. <laughs> um, but yeah, not always. And sometimes you have a lot of documents to read. I think that's learning to read really quickly, I think is, is, is something that would be a really good, really good talent to have. But just thinking about the remit that you you know what what the brief for the cycle champion it, it, there wasn't one really um it was something that one of the county councillors had started she's a keen cyclist um she's a conservative actually and she'd she'd sort of proposed this and then she was trying to get everybody in the district councils to get one too so i just stepped up and said i'll do it 
it has no brief it was it's very much about um what we make it um but because as a district councillor you know the district council doesn't really have anything to do with transport or highways but what it does have to do with is planning so one of the influences that we can have is on the new developments and new planning um and working alongside that and and we have in the in the big strategic sites you know we've really pushed cycling and active travel but you're right in in the sense of um being in a rural area i presume you're in quite a rural area is that where you're you're saying you're on a b road um and sometimes it's it's just not possible to put cycle lanes or pavements on on roads but yeah there are alternatives for example um Robin's been working and uh, I've been working with him actually on um, the Bairnsfield to Oxford cycle track, which is along an existing sort of bridleway, which is an old Roman road. Um, so while that's on a, on a main road on the A4074, actually having an alternative that's off road uh, is, is the best thing. So it, it's, it's having those ideas and knowing where the possible tracks are. There's another one between Longwitton and Clifton Hamden in, in, in my wards. Um, which you know the parishes have been pushing for a while and they've eventually got the land donated and, and some of that is off road because some of these old windy country roads they're just they, it, you know it's really difficult to adapt them isn't it um, and you know then the hope is and that was the long-term plan would be you get more people out of their cars and then the people who do need to use their cars or buses it works better for them they're, they're less congested and the, the buses turn up on time I mean, this is one of the things I learned working in the local plan is it's one of the big problems with rural buses um, and buses generally, but rural buses is that they won't take on routes because if they expect there to be congestion and they can't they can't arrive on time, they end up not being making it, not making any money. And you know, they can't run their service properly and they won't even start, you know, if there's congestion. So there's that chicken and egg thing that you have to solve. And there's these sort of issues that you you only come across and you only understand when you look at the technical side of it as a, as a councillor so you know encouraging buses means in lots of ways we've got to take people off the roads to start with um and then hopefully you know you get that positive loop don't you um but yeah yeah i think i think rural buses is should be you know something that we well we are promoting and it's something that goes side by side with active travel isn't it and i'm always saying to people you know a lot of people say to me oh well lots of people can't cycle they can't walk what about old people blah 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 but it's that argument that if you if all the fit and healthier people get off the road to get out of cars well then everyone else has a better much better time on the road and they can get places um apart from apart from all the you know the greenhouse gas emissions apart from all the pollution from particulates apart from all of that just encouraging people um for their own health and the well-being and less frustration <laughs> of congestion did that answer it yeah uh final yes I did. okay uh i've just got one final question before we hand over and that is over the two years could you think of an example of your best and worst experiences as a councillor? Gosh, my best uh, and worst experience to you, as opposed to talking about councillors in general. Yeah, personally for me, the worst one was when we when we were had to decide how to vote on whether to adopt the local plan or not. Um, you know, there were so many expectations. There's so many uh, expectations of the people who voted for us, residents I knew personally, as well as you know, other people who I knew had worked for me. Um, and we were forced to take this vote, forced to take it through inspection, forced to take this vote on whether to adopt it or not. Um, and the decision in the end, I abstained um, with the other Green Party members, uh, other Green Party councillors. We agreed that after a, really a lot of soul searching, that if we voted against it, we could, while we could have, you know, got rid of the local plan, chucked it out, we would have put the council in such a difficult position because it had gone on so long uh, with regards to, you know, housing being built everywhere, um, all the council being taken over by a commissioner, that we decided that we couldn't, we couldn't possibly vote for it. You know, there was just no way. But 
we decided in the end I decided to abstain and and I, I and I explained it to many people it was because I couldn't vote when we were honestly for my heart if I was being forced into this vote and so it was more of a, a process but it was a really it's a really difficult really difficult position I knew a lot of people would have been didn't understand why we did that didn't understand why I did that um, so that was hard and that was the worst bit I think um, the best bit Ooh, 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 quite hard really uh uh i think it's it's chairing the the um climate and ecology committee has been really great i've really enjoyed that getting um the motions through council i've done i've done that i've got an ecological emergency motion um which went through unanimously that was really satisfying really enjoyable um so they've been they've been good things but i think also getting i mean joe and i spent a lot of time on our corporate plan and asked, you know, our long, long term strategy and um, a lot of what we wrote, we were just writing things that we really wanted to happen. And it was all accepted. And it was like, oh, OK, you know, not many people came back with. So that was really exciting. Just just like, oh, OK, 